I just like small form factor PCs, but it always bugs me that most of the time you need to have some compromises, carefully pick parts in order to fit them in the ITX case, going for less powerful GPU or CPU in order to avoid high temperatures. If you are just like me and also wanted to build a small gaming PC or workstation, but find it hard to know where to begin and which case to pick for your first mini build, I believe I found the best option for highest performance in a small case. Hi there, Post Processes here and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to build high-end PC for gaming and Unreal Engine development in small form factor case. As a lot of you asked in the comments, what are my PC specs which I am using for Unreal Engine 5 development? And you have probably seen this small fella in all of my videos. Let's talk about parts, put all of them together, and then we will check the performance in Unreal Engine 5 and gaming, which you can expect from this build. For the case, I picked Cooler Master 200P. I really like how well it is built and it's really good for beginners. No need for expert skills or custom tubing for water cooling. Plus, this case is so versatile, it can fit a 240mm and even 280mm water cooling radiator to push CPU cooling even further. But before we dive in, remember, building this case is straightforward, but it's crucial to check the specs to ensure your specific GPU model will fit perfectly. You can find a list of compatible GPUs in description below. And now, let's get started. For power in this workstation, I picked Cooler Master 850W power supply with 80 plus gold certification. It's an SFX power supply and it fits really well. Also for this case you can use SFX L power supplies. For processor I've chosen Intel i9-13900K as main purpose in my work in Unreal Engine and Unreal does not benefit from multi-threading so much until the upcoming update which will be released 2024. But gaming performance also really good with i9. Motherboard I'm using is MSI MBG Z790i. There is a plenty of USB ports including Type-C port, Wi-Fi 6E, 2 M.2 slots and big heat sinks. This motherboard supports up to 128GB of RAM DDR5, but currently it's not available with 2 slot option. You can only get 96GB in 2 slots with 48 each. For RAM I'm using Corsair Vengeance 96GB with 6400MHz speed on XMP profile. It's a low-profile memory which will help when installing the water cooling and may be beneficial for the fitment of air cooling too. Install it to motherboard applying firm pressure until you hear a click. Cooler Master 200P not only fits our high-end components but also is easy to build in. You can disassemble it almost to bare bones and remove bottom bracket for easier GPU installation. This case is a dream for beginners who would like to start making mini ITX builds. After placing motherboard in the case, we can install cooling bracket, as it is easy to reach the other side of motherboard by removing the side panel of the case. What I realized later that I could have easily installed the pump before placing the motherboard in the case, but installing pump was still very convenient as you have access from almost every side. For CPU cooling, I'm using NZXT Kraken 240 water cooling system. It fits really nice in this case and I had good experience with it before. For GPU, I picked Gigabyte WinForce RTX 4090, as it was the only one at the time of the purchase in Czech Republic that could fit in the case, as Unreal heavily relies on GPU memory and RTX 4090 packs 24 gigs of RAM, which really helps avoiding crashes during the renders if GPU memory is depleted. Completed. First, I had doubts, as this GPU looks absolutely massive and takes probably 35% of the case volume. In the end, it fitted really well, even though it is 1mm longer than maximum GPU length stated in case specifications, which is 330mm. In order to get the GPU into the case, I needed to push the front bracket a little bit to the side, so it can be placed in PCI slot of motherboard. You don't need to apply a lot of force to do that and you won't damage anything if you are doing it gently. At this point we only need to assemble this case back and mount the water cooling radiator on the side bracket which is included with the case. After that you only need to re-secure the side panels. And this is the build complete. Worth to mention that you won't be able to use glass side panel which comes with the case as it won't allow you to close it with the all power cables from the GPU. But anyway, using glass panel for this current build is absolutely pointless as it will block your cooling. But before we move on, if you'd like to see more videos about Unreal Engine and hardware which I'm using for development, 
it would mean a lot for me if you subscribed. That really helps me to develop this channel and continue creating tutorials on Unreal Engine and videos like this. Thank you. Back to the video. Let's see what performance this PC packs, starting with some games. I'm not much of a gamer myself during recent years, but I have a nice Steam library of games that I don't play as I have too much work. Let me know in the comments if that feels relatable. Starting with Cyberpunk in 4K, ultra settings and ray tracing quality set to Psycho, you will have around 65 to 80 FPS with DLSS set to quality. While using frame generation and ultra settings, you will get nice performance boost from 90 to 140 frames per second depending on if the pass tracing is enabled. I think in a game like this you would like to have DLSS and frame generation enabled. In online shooter games like Call of Duty you would probably disable DLSS LSS, as in competitive games players want lower latency, and here we are able to get well above 140 FPS. Regarding temperatures during gaming, on average I see CPU sitting around 50s and GPU at higher 60 degrees, which I believe is very good result for such a powerhouse packed in a small case. and I'm pretty happy with the results. Regarding renders in Unreal Engine, CPU sits around 45 to 50 degrees and GPU about 50 during pass tracing renders, as GPU doing pauses for each sub-sample capture. During renders in Lumen, it gets slightly higher temperatures, around 65 degrees, but I still find it acceptable. Only software which makes RTX 4090 get over 70 degrees is Embergen, as it uses GPU for real-time simulation, and if you have a lot of voxels in the simulation, it will increase the load on the GPU. So I'm pretty happy with this build so far and I'm pretty surprised that i9 performs really well under cooling with a 240mm radiator and I think the case really looks aesthetically pleasing and how easy it was building with it and it is amazing what you can fit inside. I managed to install also two SSDs on the front panel and even one 3.5 inch hard disk drive inside. That's why I find this case uncompromisable. It does not require a lot of planning before the build, despite its 18 liter volume, every feature is thoughtfully laid out, making it really easy to build without careful measurements and without making some compromises on cooling or disk space installations. I'm really happy with the parts which I picked for this build. I didn't have any issues putting them all together. Let me know in the comments what you liked about this build or what would you change. Also, if you would like to build something similar, I have all the links down in the description. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.